Okay, one moment. Okay, great. All right. So, hello everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is safe and sound during this pandemic, and uh, well, everyone has got a hang of this new normal now. I would like to welcome and thank you all for taking out time and showing up for this webinar of ours. I will quickly give a short introduction about myself, uh, the companies, and all our panelists and the speaker. So I'll start with myself. My name is Vivek Kadam. Uh, I have been with I2E Consulting for about five years now. I started off my career years ago in customer support, and then over the years, I moved to sales. I look after the sales at I2E Consulting India. Our company, I2E Consulting, is a software services providing company founded in the year 2008 in the US. I2E provides business consulting and technological solutions to large pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer, Merck, Abbott, ACG, Ironwood, Novartis, etc. We are a Microsoft Gold partner and our major services revolve around Office 365, project and portfolio management, data visualization and digital transformation. This event is co-hosted by our partner, Conval Group. Now, Conval Group was incorporated in the year 2000 as a company with a mission of serving as consultants and technology enablers for life sciences industry. For increasing need of compliance and quality in various business units of pharma industry, Conval Group provides services around production quality control, quality assurance, information technology, and R&D. On the panel, we have with us today our speaker, Mr. Haluk Tanka. Uh, Haluk, could you please move to the next slide? Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, can you please you. Uh, change the slide? Uh, just quickly do the introduction of the rest of the speakers and your introduction as well. So about Mr. Haluk Tanka, he has over 30 years of rich experience in IT and business operations in pharmaceutical, FMCG, service, manufacturing, food, home appliances sectors. The experience in computer systems validation, multinational team management and matrix management. He has worked closely with senior and line managers between business functions and information technology, providing them with expert guidance support and full range of technology innovations. We have Mr. Chinmoy Roy. Chinmoy Roy is a subject matter expert in CSV, data integrity, validation, and quality assurance. He has over 40 years of field experience in various sectors such as engineering, manufacturing, IT, and life sciences. He has assisted companies in establishing data integrity programs, training employees in data integrity best practices. And in 2019, his lucid presentation style was awarded the best speaker of the year by IVT USA. Next, we have Mr. Timur Kabadai, Managing Director at Conval Group. He has around 30 years of experience in pharma domain. He's a strong business development professional with a demonstrated history of working in the pharmaceutical industry. Computerized system validation, verification and validation, change control, document management, and GMP are some of his strong areas. And last but not the least, we have Mr. Arjun Guha, Director of Operations at Conval Group, with more than 25 years of experience working in the pharma uh, and life sciences industry. He is a SAP PP 7.0 certified CISA certified professional, experienced in quality assurance, strategic operations management, project quality management, serialization, track and trace for global projects in pharma and healthcare. We have, you know, big people with big experience with us today. So let us, uh, you know, let us not make any delay and start with our presentation. The topic is IT infrastructure quality assurance for life sciences industry. So over to you, Halo. So uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Vivek. Uh, just a small update here that we also have Dr. Sigma Sigfred Smith, Vice President Technical at Paraxel Consulting. Also, he has joined us basically uh, in the group, and we uh -huh. have uh, we are to have Dr. Smith with us as a part of our panel today. Oh, great! Welcome, uh, Dr. Smith. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I think we can start. Hello, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Vivek, and uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to give a general influence uh, what's happened on the IT systems and especially for the pharma and life science industry because uh, I was working in pharma more than 30 years and we started the computer size a room size and now it's completely different uh, aspect is coming and also in the pharma industry as all know is a highly regulated and highly demanding industry for every aspect. But uh, if we are talking about the IT part, as you know, the IT is the more faster uh, developing than the pharma industry, but the regulations, all the rules, everything's coming in behind. So in that case, sometimes we are having difficulties on the IT world to understand what needs to be done and how, how things need to be done the, in line with the regulations in uh, life science industry. So in that case, if we start with the general fundamentals of the IT quality system, and we have to uh, divide a couple of topics uh, to uh, in deep dive for the understanding the IT world and the, how we are gonna match with the life science industry. So uh, first, uh, this is the, our agenda. So we are, um, firstly, I'm going to talk about the GXP system. So which the, any system is in the IT should be uh, categorized some kind of uh, related to pharma and the uh, quality aspects, data information and process kind of things and how it's going to be qualified and how it's going to be support that cycle as a pharma need and the life science needs, sorry, uh, to environment control and which kind of quality system needs to be in IT. So the normally, the, if we are talking about the quality system in the life science industry, everybody thinks of the production, distribution, laboratory kind of things. But unfortunately, last 10 years, the IT and the data uh, assurance, which means the infrastructure assurance, come to the picture more and more every day. So the regulators and the all the uh, parties related to regulations, it's more focusing on the electronic systems, data infrastructure. So at the end of the day, we always know that if any system is created, they have a life, uh, life cycle. So there will be a retirement. It's not an easy, uh, we can just plug it out from the system, any infrastructure or data keeper uh, equipment. So we need to think about how we are going to retire it and the, which kind of audits is the scope of the uh, IT. So which kind of information, which kind of evidence we need to provide. And of course, it's the, the most uh, critical part of training and the, the related procedures, the in general uh, rule of the IT, which kind of procedure needs to be in place. In that case, if we start with the GXP systems, so every system, the, no matter what, which kind of system come to the picture in the life, in life science industry, we have to identify a system. This is a simple uh, diagram, so it can be more detailed, it can be less detailed, but in general, every system should be assessed to be identified this is a GXP means any uh, touching point to the product or patient safety not enough and also this is the data integrity the quality assurance and also infrastructure assurance part in that case so every system firstly before going any project before going selection so they have to have a definition for GXP or non-GXP. Even if non-GXP, in the regulated environment, uh, every system should follow a couple of uh, uh, procedures and a couple of uh, methods or project methodology to be followed and documented. 
all those things need to be in quality manual of the company. It's a ideal word. If there is no any uh, quality manual, the IT has to uh, identify their project methodology or documentation methodology based on GXP or non-GXP system. If we are going to the support and uh, how we are going to do it part, so it's a concept as I explained, so we need to define the system or application, GXP or non-GXP, then we need to plan. So if it's a non-GXP, which kind of documentation, which kind of test, which kind of risk analysis needs to be done and create the project and make a configuration, then it's going to be a verification and reporting. The, if, if you are looking from that angle on the IT world, it's a too complicated, too much work. It's definitely not like in the IT world, but unfortunately the IT uh, departments or IT organizations should understand to highly regulated environment in life science. The IT, it's a part of quality. It's a part of the company. And it has to be a same consideration as the other departments. And some kind of the fundamentals, uh, if we are creating any system into the organization, in general concept, there is a two part of a uh, copy uh, of the infrastructure or systems needs to be in place one for development environment which is you can play with it you can make a configuration change everything then <coughs> sorry then move to do tests or it calls qa or staging environment to make all the testable and the final configuration in the staging make all necessary tests documentation and evidence creation if everything's done then move to the production environment which is as it is the application in that case uh, if you can see the some additional stages on the development environment if there is a, a software development code creation kind of information the kind of uh, processes doing in the company the uh, that you have to create you can create some sandbox uh, integration sandbox or couple of different sub-test environments in the development side. So those part is just the playground for the developers or pre-test or uh, just the first uh, analysis. Then, but everything is when goes to the QA or staging part, it needs to be not touched and not changed on the staging because if everything goes well, the, it's going to be moved to the production. And also the life cycle concept, again, uh, I have explained before, definitely it should be de defined at the beginning. So which kind of uh, process, which kind of coding methodology, which kind of change management is going to be in place and everything needs to be documented, traceable and uh, based on the risk assessed because any system or any infrastructure it's going to be part of the quality system and and G, and the retirement part it's always a little bit negligible uh, most of the organizations but if you want to plug it out any system from the organization uh, you have to define there's a couple of topics it's uh, i'm not going through all those information one by one but you have to decide first how you are going to disconnect the system and who is the responsible for this one and who is going to prove to all the uh, disconnections what will be the data in the future it's going to be used again it's just stored somewhere for a while or just a distraction and also, the all disconnections, distractions, all the, the processes needs to be a change management. So this part, it's mostly a, not put in the picture at the beginning. When you are trying to be retire a, pro, a system, then you will face uh, 
and you will face this kind of uh, need. Or when you are saying to the auditors, so this system is retired, then they start to asking, how did you retire? Where is the data? What would be the future use of data? Blah, blah, the questions. So the retirement process is the most, as the same importance of your implementation uh, project. Uh, and also audit part, there is a two audit. So you can have an audit uh, from authority or regulators and also you have to make an, some audit your suppliers in life science industry. Uh, this part also, it's sometimes it's forgetting in IT because they think that IT systems are full technical, too technical, so you cannot make an uh, assessment or audit to the company, but this is a requirement directly coming from the regulations and guidelines GUMP 5 and ISP guidelines and also Annex 11, uh, CFR 21, Part 11, asking to assess and make an audit, so depending on the uh, risk base. So you have to have make a risk assessment or audit to your suppliers. Some kind of a big suppliers like Microsoft, of course, you cannot make a directly to audit them. But uh, this kind of big companies as a widely used applications providers and like Oracle, Microsoft and SAP, they are providing white papers on their uh, public website so they can explain their uh, quality system and how they are handling any issues and how, you are de how they are developing their system. So this kind of, system, this kind of suppliers can be a basic assessment. But if you are talking about uh, uh, more detailed and the GXP and uh, deep knowledge and data integrity uh, providers, data integrity solution providers, you have to have a site audit and the, they have to see their uh, IT quality system, how they are handling compliance, how, how they are uh, staging, how they are testing, this kind of information. And the training part, you can see all the uh, assurance in the life science, a uh, couple of requirements. And also the validated computerized system, secure IT infrastructure, and qualified equipment and methods. But most critical part, those three things connecting with the people. So people will uh, manage these uh, systems and make some connections is always not an electronic so most critical and the difficult training part to the people so you have to uh, train the uh, IT people most uh, proper way of the uh, methodology or your uh, providing solution and also you have to document it you have trained and repetition of the training and the refresh of the trainings when needed. And all the uh, training approach, it's definitely based on the risk, uh, risk approach. If you are talking about the highly risk environment on the uh, infrastructure side, you need to more training, you need to give more training to the people. But if you are talking about just the user access management, you can just make one or two training and refresh the training every year, it can be helped. But if you are talking about creating the platform or the connection of the servers or creating an, the extending of the network kind of processes, you need deep knowledge, you need to give more training to the people because this is very important to create one connection, sometimes it can be stopped all the organization. Now it's the procedures and policies. Those procedures, it's not nice to have, they have to have in the IT organization to be keep everything intact and process needs to be secure. But only the coding standard and software build part, if and the coding review part, if anything developing in the 
uh, organization. If you are not developing any in, uh, anything inside, so the other uh, other SOPs help to manage the IT. Nevertheless, of course, you can have some more detailed and more uh, process-oriented SOPs also in uh, IT, but the, those are the main SOPs. There's always the asking in the audit part and you can be sure to your IT organization working properly as a risk-based approach. And horizontal or platform-based approach, uh, as you know, the in, in the past, if we are talking about the infrastructure, it means there is a data room and a couple of active direct, active devices and wiring, blah, blah, kind of things. But now it's directly, uh, the assurance model is completely change, changing now. So there will be a platform. You can build the platform first, then you can put to your required infrastructure needs, servers, connections, everything's on the platform. And as much as possible, every company trying to be cost saving on the infrastructure side and they can create one platform, then use the same platform, different, uh, different infrastructure needs. Because of that, so you can make one installation one installation and qualification on the platform base then you can just make a validation required application like limbs like sap whatever needed so every time you don't need to qualify it to the platform every application change or addition and also there's a vice versa you are you can if you want to change the application, you don't need to qualify the platform again. So because platform is already being qualified, you can just putting your needs on the platform. But anyway, so the, the platform part, it can be very different uh, approaches. Uh, the platforms can be uh, inside of the company and the platform can be outside of the company or it can be shared with some others. In the near future, most of the life science industry, still they are a little bit afraid of the putting all the platforms on the shared uh, environment, but definitely uh, it gives some benefits. So you cannot, it, it gives a benefit and they cannot avoid it. They, have to have some find a way to going to do a shared uh, platform for the all their needs and also this gives you a very flexibility on the standardization and the technology if you want to change your platforms a better technology or cheaper or more efficient one you don't need to touch your applications you just change the uh, platform and the documentation needs, so you can just make a, one documentation and change one documentation for platform, the other documentation still intact for the application. And cloud-based approach, if you are talking about the cloud, so there will be a couple of things coming onto the picture because as I explained, so most, uh, more, most companies are looking for a more efficient or more uh, more efficient, more secure, and <clears throat> more cost-effective uh, solutions, which means it's coming to the cloud base. The firstly, the cloud base is coming with the software as a service platform. So you can just buy a software with the platform uh, belong to the provider, it seems, but at the end of the day, the platform might be belong to another and the supplier has a another SLA between suppliers. So in that case, the quality departments, it's, uh, there is a mix up because they are looking for the classical approach. They have to have a test methodology, test uh, platform, where is the platform, who is on it kind of things. So this time, so you need to be, think about to IT infrastructures, how it needs to be organized. And also uh, only the IT and quality, we call it IT uh, 
quality management can understand this kind of approach. It's not a just life science uh, quality thing. Also, it's a technical uh, technology plus people plus life science and also IT knowledge needed. If we are talking about the infrastructure as a service, you can hear this word almost five, six years now. And there is a server farm or somewhere, but you are just renting their servers or devices and creating a VPN tunnel between your organization and this kind of server farm. And you can send and receive data securely. This is the simplest way, but it's not cheap and easy, and it's not fully secure yet. And if we are talking about the platform as a service, now it's coming last three, three, four years come to the picture. One, one example uh, is a Microsoft Azure Cloud and Google Cloud kind of things. They are providing the platform, which is connection the infrastructure connections also on platform the they can keep your data integrity also server farm and also the connection between your platform and the, your server side it is more uh, deep knowledge needed and more technical side and also you have to have a trusted partner for the managing the platform you cannot keep this kind of uh, deep data integrity uh, requirements to the direct supplier, you have to find a service supplier just for managing the platform. If the cloud base coming to the uh, picture, so you have to define an ownership, who own the platform, who own the application, who own the service and support of the platform. Because you can buy a, some software which is running on Azure Cloud, and who is owning your data? Who is uh, managing your application? Who is managing your uh, platform? For the availability, what's your expectation? And what's the real availability? And the, if there is any uh, outages, which part is causing the outages? Is a platform? or is an application or is a service leakage. Then also you have to think about the outages, planned and communication, how it's going to be planned, how it's going to be communicated, and the disaster recovery planning. Uh, who is recovering the platform? Who is recovering the application? Who is responsibility? And those, all those things, it's coming to the picture Another topic is the SLA management. So when you are having any, as a platform, as a service, as a whatever it is, you have to have a SLA management in the IT organization. It means any IT platform or services outsourced and also retirement, also the responsibility, you have to define your responsibility and your supplier responsibility also the responsibility between your supplier and supplier's supplier for example if you are buying a limbs on the cloud base just an example and they are putting the as a platform on azure so you have to be aware or what is the uh, the performance monitoring between limbs and uh, uh, azure as a microsoft so you have to to have this information otherwise uh, you can be lost in between so they can ping and pong so the outages or some lack of information coming from platform or others coming from the application or services so the SLA management is a most critical part in the future in the IT organization so that's all from my side. So I'm very happy and thank you to the listening and the, I'm really happy to answer any questions. Oh, well, thank you so much, Hanuk, for uh, this insightful presentation. Uh, so 
to all the attendees that we have today. We are now open for any questions that you have. You can send me the questions uh, and we will start taking them one by one. Uh, all right, we've, start, we've started receiving questions. I see the first one here. According to you, what are recommendations for effective risk management of IT infra project? Who would like to take this uh, from the panelists? I'll repeat the question again. Uh, according to you, what are recommendations for effective risk management of IT infra project? Let, let me try to explain, Vivek. Okay. And in the, any IT infrastructure projects, so uh, definitely the uh, capacity, it's capacity and availability is the most critical risk measurement and the second risk measurement is the data integrity and the responsibility first we have to identify our capacity which kind of capacity we need this is this is not a just a educational guess because the new platforms or new uh, infra everything's based on capacity so you are going to charge by the capacity availability and also uh, the re recovery responsibility. If you are talking about uh, some application can be breakdown or infrastructure breakdown in two days, this is not a problem. But then it's a cheap. And uh, but if you are talking about like limbs, you cannot wait more than two hours. It's a very expensive solution so the capacity and availability most critical uh, risks the secondary risk is the responsibility and the uh, performance monitoring dr okay. smith um, with with all this uh, experience across the world what you have uh, you know what do you feel as uh, the critical risk in these areas of IT infrastructure because this is some area which is not seen directly by the business uh, but uh, you know as we all know that this plays a very important role uh, from you know baselining all the applications on which it is running so um, just if you can share some of your experiences thoughts yes thank you very much now, first of all, I have to say that it is really absolutely essential to have a properly qualified infrastructure. Without it, there is no computer system validation. You need to have the basis. And here we're talking about the basis. So really what we're talking about here is absolutely essential for all the healthcare industry. You're right, it doesn't often receive the attention it deserves. And uh, I, I'm very glad that the risks were identified as capacity and security. Indeed, as we saw from the slides, there are issues with some of the ways infrastructure is managed today. And so we need to do good risk assessments in-house to understand, do we still have control? Do we have the right controls over the systems and the data? So you may want to deploy different infrastructure solutions depending on the risk and yes this is an issue in all the companies everywhere in the world there is no particular um, issue just in one area and not in another so i'm very very glad we have this presentation today great 
uh, we have a few Thank more you. questions. Uh, maybe, maybe just also, you know, we would like to hear from Chinmoy. Chinmoy, can you hear us? Chinmoy? Hello? Uh, are you able to hear us, Chinmoy? Because I have a question for you as well. Okay. I see that okay. he is, I, he's not muted. I mean, the, it says unmute over here. Okay. So let me let me still ask the question because this is important for uh, all of us. Uh, so let me ask this question to uh, everyone and let's see how we can answer this because many times when we are talking about IT infrastructure, we are uh, missing out on the key aspect of uh, security assessment. Considering the last, you know, just if you say the last three to four years, we had been seeing a lot of data breaches, targeted attacks, ransomware attacks, and um, also um, on, on, on almost all companies, but it has recently become much more specific towards the pharma companies. Um, you know, in 2018, Bayer had a targeted attack. And, uh, you know, we also know that many other companies had this, Merck had this, Roche had also these similar types of attacks. Primarily, you know, these companies are big players and they still have all the tools available uh, with them uh, to uh, thwart these attacks. So what did we miss? What exactly were the vulnerabilities? Um, you know, how did somebody get access to the systems and start controlling their systems. Um, so the question is again, uh, you know, on the aspect of security, that how does that, how this, how has the security landscape changed over this last uh, few years? I would say like that. Uh, uh, may, may I? Yeah, please go ahead. No, no, uh, I just want to do the Timur Bay was in, so you can go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I mean, you know, then I, then I will leave you, Timur. So ba basically, you know, what I see is, uh, Arjun, you know, that's a very good point, what you are mentioning. And then what is happening is that's my feeling. Uh, the, the technology is coming in, especially in pharma industry, in a, in a very high speed level. And then also the connectivity of the systems became much more, much more integrated. And then, you know, the biggest right now, we, we used to have this targeted, uh, targeted attacks, let's say, let's say for the, I don't know, like classical IT systems, let me put it that way, classical meaning that, you know, ERP systems and, and the other type. But, you know, more and more also we do see like the security breaches are coming to the sh production floor, shop floor. They are targeting PLCs. They are targeting like, you know, like industrial PCs. So, you know, that's what we are seeing also coming along more and more. What I feel is the security aspect is not managed like with, a, with, with, with an overall, overall perspective security, rather than most, farm, most companies what we have faced, not the big ones, you know, in big ones, they are getting there more and more. But for the rest of the industry, it is, it is managed like ad hoc and then only manage when something is happening. You know, when something happens, then there is action. Then something happens, then there is action. So I think uh, this overall view of the security and then and the, and the understanding the threats, where they come and how these threats are moving by time and then what kind of vulnerabilities are established into the IT systems, they are not uh, seen in a holistic way in the companies. That's what I see. And on top of it, uh, there is not so much information sharing about this type of uh, security aspects across the industry in pharma. So in banking industry, they are, for example, banking and insurance industry, they are much more connected and then they share this type of information uh, and then, you know, then they, they, they act very fast on it because that's their bread and bread. But in pharma, we don't have something like this. That's what I see also coming along. Okay. And, and I mean, that's my two Chinmoy. cents. Thank you, Timur. And I uh, can, can Chinmoy, can you hear us now?
हेलो चिन्मय because i could hear chinmoy but i think uh, you know there is yeah, an activity I... here can you just re uh, re add chinmoy into the panel maybe that would be nice because i talked to him and he is listening to us meanwhile uh, you know maybe let's pick up the next question uh, from colleagues here so is okay. network qualification important for applications and how do we qualify Mm. So perhaps uh, I, I can say a few words. It's secret here. So <clears throat> the, as I mentioned before, you need to have a qualified infrastructure, and that includes the network. And uh, without it being under proper control and documentation, we cannot have the the applications on top. being reliable and trustworthy so it is essential to have it in place arjun i think uh, chinmoy is going to rejoin so yeah anyone would like to add more to what dr ashmit said i can add few few cents on top of uh, dr uh, dr schmitz so you know uh, yes we have to have to do it and then you know annex 11 clearly says that networks it infrastructure along with networks should be qualified uh, with the network qualification what i what i what i foresee is that's always like a network is with the cables and then bringing your information from one place to another place so what we are suggesting is you know uh, for the network qualification so what we suggest to the companies is first take again a risk based approach because the network is across the company in many many cables going across the company and then what we do is over there is basically with the network topology what we take from the companies the network topology and based on this topology so we come up we come up with a risk assessment and then you know we do the qualification test and then detailed qualification for the network part which carries the gxp data for example in laboratories and production and then the remaining parts we rely only the commissioning of those network parts so i mean you know then by doing this type of a network in the risk risk based approach we definitely reduce the effort for testing and for documentation Uh, overall network but we ensure that we ensure that the gxp part of the network is fully documented fully qualified and then non gxp part of the network for example like you know when you have only the main building of the pharma company which has only like offices for example they are only commissions and also in these offices there are a lot of changes may happen and then you know they are managed only through the commissioning commissioning through the engineering part rather than going back and for the qa and getting the approval so that would be my two cents and that's up to you Vivek. Uh, yeah perhaps yeah. i can just add to this uh, i yes. totally agree we need to make sure we spend our uh, uh, money wisely but we mustn't forget that uh, the understanding the network topology does help us immensely understanding do we have the right security in place because yeah. i've seen network diagrams and you looked at where was the firewall it was in the wrong place <laughs> so we need yes. to have proper network topology understanding yeah and, I, and i would like to i would like to say something about where the firewall is thing if it's a not qualified uh, infrastructure you never know where the second or third or fourth or fifth and n firewall in the system yeah good also uh, one 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 thing which we always see as uh, when we talk about it people think about data and it's a department which is running the show 
but we also have lots of operational technologies in pharma which can be as simple as a checkware to granulators to uh, coating machines you know automatic filling lines and these are systems which are extremely important from an operational perspective and somehow these systems are not looked into with the same uh, vision as that of IT. Primarily, you know, in the areas of CIA or confidentiality, integrity and availability, that's like sort of the, you know, holy triage for, um, you know, any information system related to IT. But in case of operational technologies like this, it's just the reverse. So it is A, I and C, which is basically they have to be available. That's the primary importance. And then, you know, integrity, of course, and then confidentiality is the third part. So I think we just got Chinmoy back. So that's awesome. Chinmoy cold booted his system, something went wrong. Thanks a lot. So uh, there had been a question, uh, Vivek, I would like to pick that one up, uh, okay. you know, which is talking about what is the difference between IT infrastructure and network qualification. Right. Um, if somebody would like to take that up in the uh, discussion. Well, again, if I may just say a few words. You see, the, the IT infrastructure isn't just a bit of network and a computer here and there. It's all the services that belong to the IT group. That includes the backup services, that includes the help desk, uh, disaster recovery, all these elements that uh, are uh, offered by the infra infrastructure management, if you want. So it's a it's bit more than just a network qualification or just a server qualification. Maybe I can add some couple of few words and it's not a qualified a system. It's a qualification of the work, work progress. So all modules on the work including a uh, incident management the uh, disaster recovery what you said so it is different not qualify just a system it's not qualifying uh, just device and cables okay uh, I, there was i think another part of the same question what is the difference in validation approach to be followed for both server and network? Um, the same question. Uh, I'll read it again. What is the difference between infrastructure qualification, server, and network qualification? And what is the difference in validation approach to be followed? So, and um, the Again, it's just, just told a few minutes ago, and the infrastructure qualification, or uh, that's just a server qualification is different. Server qualification is just to qualify a device and the security measurement of a device. But if you are talking about the qualification of the infrastructure, all aspects of the infrastructure, including active devices, cables, SOPs, uh, some security measurements, everything's related to infrastructure, not just servers or a uh, network. Great. Uh, yeah, there's one more question. It says, your view on improvement for day-to-day -day IT quality operational risks. Day-to-day uh, -day operational risk, it's uh, increasing actually in the IT world in the last couple of years because uh, as Timur Bey mentioned, the IT is coming to the shop floor. So the production lines also is a part of IT connection, uh, not uh, like that before. But 
we, uh, there is a lack of communication between departments. Uh, sometimes a laboratory or production wants to do something related to IT, but they are not communicating on time before the, uh, doing something. And also the uh, contractors sometimes approaching directly to the uh, IT systems without IT in, uh, informing, without informing the IT department, there might be cause some risks and also security uh, breaches. And risk management making generally uh, when needed, it's a, a ad hoc risk. If there is something happen and there's an incident, there is a risk assessment, but it should be uh, proactively make a risk assessment like a periodic review, uh, part of the uh, system in IT. And also it should be the part of the risk assessment. All right. Um, moving any, on. any other? Arjun Bey, maybe you can add uh, some information on your side. I think uh, we have covered it and rounded the questions very nicely. And I would like to go on to another topic which we have discussed and which, uh, you know, we have all been, you know, facing on a routine basis. Cloud is something which has come. But if we look into all the, you know, recent audits which we are performing to cloud service providers, you know, even to the good ones, we do a major gap and that's basically um, what's worrying all of us so I just want to hear from the panelists here you know how you are what is your recommendation you know how far we should go into uh, you know the cloud uh, infrastructure and how far we should go, go into tying all the corners for cloud applications Uh, it's uh, Siegfried here. Um, I think we need to do a risk-based approach again. Uh, what I see uh, in some companies is that, yes, cloud is embraced, but different types of cloud, whether the cloud is managed by the in-house IT team or whether it is an outsourced cloud. So where there's highly critical data, these companies keep the keep cloud servers, but in-house. Whereas uh, for less critical applications, this may be outsourced to whichever service provider is acceptable. Can you folks hear me? This is Chinmoy. Hello. Yes, we can. Yes, hear you. Yes, we can hear you very well. You can. Everybody can now. Yeah. I had a little bit of a problem. I had to cold boot my system. So on hey, this Kimo, question. Thank you so much. Welcome. I I would like to add what has been said that uh, typically in the cloud, I think the industry is moving to the cloud, as the presenter said that uh, because it's an outsourcing service. We the, uh, the the core business of pharmaceutical companies is not IT, but it is they they have to rely heavily on IT. So they they need to maintain a staff within the company as well as externally. They use services such as IaaS and SaaS, SaaS, all this stuff. So the critical thing of the cloud is what does your SLA say, and especially in these days, as Arjun said. Security is a big issue, security of data. So in the SLA, a good amount of it should you devote to the security of data because that is one of the services you are outsourcing when you go for SaaS or IaaS. That's where your data, SaaS also provides IaaS. So be very careful and be very strict as to many companies, what they do, they detect some problem, but they don't inform you. They start doing their own work and three, four, six days later, they said, oh yeah, we had this problem. No, your SLA should say, as soon as you detect, inform us there is a problem. 
and then you have internal procedures, SOPs. What do you do when your service provider comes and tells you? That is the critical part. And that is, you know, process, right? SLA is a process. It's, it's not a server hardware. It's a process feature. And then there is the people feature of IT infrastructure. So that's all I got to add here. Thanks a lot, Chinma, Thank for, you, you so know, much. jumping in here. Right. And, um, you know, finally, we could, uh, you know, all of us, all the panel members are together. So uh, I would have one uh, question uh, coming in from Vivek. I think, um, you know, there is one question coming in. Right, yeah. Uh, so it is, is mirror imaging of server at disaster site with secured server a mandate? If data loss is found during mock test, what should be acceptable criteria? Who would like to take this one? It's actually, a, I can say a few words, but the, 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 everything depends on your risk assessment. How much the risk assessment criteria of this server or if, uh, of this data. If it's a highly risk data, it's a critical data, it shouldn't be a mirror copy it should be a proper copy. But if it's a medium level, if you are losing, for example, a couple of hours data, it's acceptable, you can use a mirror copy. But if it's a serialization data, maybe Arjun can say something more than that. So you cannot uh, expect more than 10 minutes lose data. It's a mirror copy, it's not acceptable depending on your uh, risk assessment. Arjun, you want to say something? No, look, you're absolutely right. And also like in serialization, a huge amount of data is exchanged between, you know, line level systems, servers, and also within and outside the organization through various protocols like SOAP, is too and there's a whole lot in the market now when these sort of protocols work you know we have to understand how the data is behaving so is it a synchronous or an asynchronous uh, sort of a messaging which is being done and how the data is pulled in and how you see the data of an asynchronous message so all these are the more you know detailed part of uh, you know data exchange and all these needs to be validated. At the end, we need to be sure that the data which we are being, which is being exchanged across the various platforms are correct, valid, and also it is complete. And that's where uh, the success story lies. Okay. Uh, I also want to jump in to answer this because I'm looking at the question and I'm reading the first sentence. It says, is mirror imaging of server at disaster site a mandate? No, that's not the mandate because what you are asking in your question is a solution. And the way I know about regulations, they tell, they are usually what they are after. What the regulators are after is that the data should be available on demand. Okay, why? why they have put that in the regulation is that if you don't have data available on demand, how are you operating? How do you know what you're doing is right? So the mandate is data availability. I don't remember the number. It could be 211.190. Now, how you achieve it and what assurance you have that your data is available is what the auditors will seek from you. So whether you employ RAID 5, whether you employ uh, uh, redundant networks, which is data in motion, uh, is, is all what you have to determine by way of critical thinking during your design stage. It is not, I'm trying to tell the industry there's a big difference between critical thinking and risk assessment. So 
And now if data loss is found during mock test, what should be acceptable criteria? Regulators don't uh, give you any acceptable criteria that I know of. It is up to your management and your people. That's called risk tolerance. If you see ICHQ9, and if your management accepts that risk, whatever it is, it, you have to do, understand your science, understand why you're losing data, write a rationale, get it approved, and that's what auditors will see, and be ready to defend it. Be ready to give them the assurance. That's, you know, CSA, right? Computer, computerized systems, assurance, not validation. After validation, how do you assure yourself? That's all. Okay, so uh, I think we, we, we do not have any more questions. And uh, yeah, it's already an hour. It looks like uh, we've just ended at the right time. So yeah, I, I don't see any more questions. So I would like to, oh, this, we've got one last question, yeah. Is the mirror technology a part of the server, then the data will remain available. I'll read that again. It's, is the mirror technology a part of the server, then the data will remain available. Who would like to take this one? Gentlemen. Yeah, those, you know, they, they, they come with the server, RAID. The, you know, RAID 5 and that's an array, right? Data storage, data data in in motion, data in storage. So it is a part, my feeling is, it is a part of the server design, the, the RAID technology. All right. Okay, so I think we're done with the questions. Uh, I would like to thank everyone on the panel and everyone in the uh, attendee list for uh, showing up and attending this amazing session with us today. Uh, this was a uh, this session was recorded, so definitely the uh, recording will be available on both our websites. That is Conval's website and I2E's website, and we will be reaching out to you in the future, and we'll be asking you to attend more such events that we host. We plan to host events fortnightly uh, and uh, thank you again for attending the session and uh, take care everyone thank you so much thank you everyone bye bye thank you bye bye thank you bye bye thank you bye bye